Ray Dalio, the co-chief investment officer of the world's largest hedge fund, Bridgewater, has predicted that a new economic disaster is going to shake our foundations soon. The 72-year-old billionaire has given the ultimate warning. The United States is at the risk of war with China and the economic disaster that ensures, as a result of it, could be catastrophic. In his latest book, Principles for Dealing with the Changing World Order, Ray Dalio has created a model that describes the typical big cycle behind the rise and decline of empires. Just as there is a human life cycle that lasts about 8 years on average, he believes there is an analogous empire life cycle with its typical patterns. Welcome back to the Wall Street winners. In today's video, we'll discuss the gruesome implications of Ray Dalio's prediction for a terrifying market collapse and whether it could actually be true. Let's examine what Dalio's big cycle model means. In brief, after the creation of a new set of rules to establish a new world order, there is usually a prosperous and peaceful period called the rise. Once people get used to this, they increasingly begin to bet on the prosperity continuing and to do so, they increasingly borrow money, eventually leading to a bubble. This point of the cycle is the top, the debt bubble bursts at some point and leads to the printing of money and credit while increasing internal conflicts. All of these factors contribute to some sort of wealth redistribution revolution that can either be violent or peaceful. Somewhere later at this point in Dalio's cycle, the leading empire that won the last economic and the geopolitical war is less powerful relative to rival powers who flourished during the prosperous period. The bad economic conditions and disagreements between world powers typically ignite some kind of war in this period of decline. Out of the debt, domestic, economic and world order breakdowns that take the forms of wars or revolutions, new winners emerge who then create a new domestic and world order. Thus, the cycle repeats once again. Sounds logical, right? Ray Dalio's cycle just depicts exactly what has happened over time. If we compare the relative powers of the 11 most powerful empires over the last 500 years in a chart, this fact is evident. Currently, the United States and China are in their cycles, and while the former is the powerful empire now, it appears to be in relative decline. On the other hand, China's power is rapidly rising and no other powers are close to China's ascent. Even if we take a simplified chart of the reserve empire transitions of the past four centuries, we can see that the United States and China are the only two major powers. We can also see that their big cycles are approaching comparability, which could indicate that the risks of some kind of war are greater than when two leading powers are earlier in the cycles. Dalio also outlines the eight key determinants of wealth and power to alert people about the markets to watch for, help them see where in their cycles the major countries are and what is likely to happen next. The determinants, education, innovation and technology, reserve currency status, military strength, economic output, competitiveness, share of world trade and financial center strength indicate how the rise and fall of major empires took place over time. He states that countries with large savings, low debts and strong reserve currency have a better chance of withstanding economic and credit collapses as opposed to those that have a lot of debt, don't have a strong reserve currency and don't have much savings. These measures of strength rise and decline over the arc of an empire because these weaknesses and strengths are mutually reinforcing. That is, strengths and weaknesses in education, economic output, innovation, etc. contribute to the other being strong or weak. Let's take a closer look into the last major period of destroying and restructuring which took place in the 1930 to 1945 period. This ultimately led to a period of building and a new world order that began with the creation of a new global monetary system and a US dominated system of world governance. Following the decline of the Dutch Empire following various shifting alliances, wars and revolutions in Europe where the British and its allies won in 1815, the winning powers met at the Congress of Vienna. At the meeting, the new world order was laid out in the Treaty of Paris, which sets the stage for Great Britain's century-long reign as the unrivaled world power. The British pound became the most dominant currency and the world flourished once again. As described in Dalio's cycle, following the period of war, there was an extended period of peace and prosperity with the British at the top. Like the Dutch before them, they followed a capitalist system to finance and incentivize people to work collectively and combine these commercial operations with military strength to exploit global opportunities. For example, they placed the Dutch East India Company with the British East India Company to become the world's most economically dominant venture. Around 1760, the British ushered in a new era of manufacturing, the Industrial Revolution which subsequently raised people's living standards. 1870 to the early 1900s marked a golden age for the British where it amped up the power. 
in all eight key ways. Excellent education, new inventions and technologies, widely used reserve currency, stronger military and financial center, higher competitiveness, higher output and trade. At the same time, several other countries used the spirit of peace and prosperity to get richer and stronger through colonization. They copied Britain's technology and techniques to flourish themselves, producing great wealth gaps. As the other countries became more competitive, the British Empire became less profitable and therefore costly to maintain. Other European countries and US became stronger militarily and economically as laid out in Dalio's cycle. As a consequence of the larger wealth gaps, there arose arguments about how wealth could be divided within countries and greater conflicts arose between economic and military powers in Europe. The international conflicts led to alliances being formed based on money and power considerations, which eventually led to war, from the Russian-French alliance to the 1917 Russian Revolution and the sinking of five merchant ships headed to England by Germany, all roads converged toward the First World War. After the war ended, a meeting called the Paris Peace Conference was held in 1919, concluding with the Treaty of Versailles, leading to the eventual demise of the British Big Cycle. After the Second World War, the US became the world's greatest power. So where are we now in the Big Cycle? According to Dalio, the New World Order was a natural consequence of the US being the richest country since it had two-thirds of the world's gold stock then, the dominant economic power since it accounted for half of the world's population and having the strongest military with its monopoly on nuclear weapons. Now, nearly 75 years later, Dalio believes that the major old empires, which are all to the major reserve currency empires, are approaching the end of their long-term debt cycle. He outlines that there are large debts and monetary policies that don't work well. He highlights that politically fragmented central governments are scrambling to fill in their financial holds by lending more money than they are borrowing. Central banks are trying to help by printing a lot of money, that is, they are trying to monetize government debt. All of this is happening where the world is at the cusp of big wealth and value gaps, while a rising power-hungry country is competing with the current world leader in trade, development, technology, geopolitics and capital markets. Above all else, we're in the midst of a pandemic. In his book, Dahlia wrote that America's attempts to make China and its culture more American could backfire eventually, instigating a conflict. This could intensify that already rampant trade war between the nations, which was started by the Trump administration in 2018. So far, the trade war has led American companies to cut wages, raise consumer prices and lower profit margins. A study conducted by Moody's Analytics found that the trade war between the two nations cost Americans nearly 300,000 jobs in just its first year. A Federal Reserve Bank of New York study also found that the trade war had cost companies in America $1.7 trillion in market capitalization alone. Dalio's comments about China and the imminent economic collapse prompted controversy. Later, in a LinkedIn post, he expressed hope that the US and China would back away from the precipice of conflict. But it's an age marked by great human thinking and computer intelligence which are creating ways of addressing the challenges in the previous big cycles, he said. He stated that his thoughts and Bridgewater's actions were of minuscule importance compared to the rapidly growing risk of the US-China war. He expressed hope that thoughtful attention would be paid to the issue to increase mutual understanding and diminish the inclination to fight. Do you think that the market collapse has begun? Will China be the next superpower? Comment below. Hope you liked our video. Please subscribe to our channel and remember to hit the like button, turn on the notification bell to never miss a new video. Share the video as far as possible because the more you know, the more you grow. Goodbye.